Hola, my lovelies. Welcome back to our Cafecito podcast. Get your coffee, get your wine, whatever it is that you drink. Sit back and relax. Let's have a conversation. So I wanted to make this uh, episode about the transit of Pluto in Aquarius. Now, this is something that I'm sure all of you guys have heard for the past two years of people, astrologers, uh, people, you know, tarot readers talking about all of this. And it is something massive, right? It is a, a major uh, shift in energies. It is a major uh, transformation that is going to be transpiring. And we began that um, since last year. And what happens is that Pluto is one of the planets that is considered a generational planet. So what does this mean? A generational planet means that it is a planet that is very slow in moving. Um, it, it goes alongside with uh, Saturn, as an example. Um, it goes along with uh, even Jupiter, where sometimes it, it takes, it can go from two to three years up to 20 or even 30 years for them, uh, more specifically Pluto, to actually do a transit. So what does this mean? This means that it can take from uh, 12, 14, 15 years uh, up to 30 years to go into one sign and be there for that amount of time before it enters another zodiac sign, another another placement, right? So when we speak about generations, what is a generation? A generation is a time frame of a, a time frame of energies and things that start to unfold in our everyday life. Uh, that could potentially uh, affect or that is going to have a major impact on those that are born around that uh, around that time frame, around that generation. So um, with Pluto going into Aquarius, um, it hasn't been there in like 218 or 220 years. And the last time, that that happened, right? The last time that we had um, Aquarius, or I should say Pluto in Aquarius, the last time that we experienced that, it, it's been a while. <laughs> you can think of the French Revolution, um, the Women's March, uh, you know, everything to do with Mary Antoinette, um, that time frame you know, uh, mostly revolution more than anything. And it is, you know, the age of enlightenment, you know, the flourishing of social sciences, individual rights and humanistic moralities. Um, and in comparison to this transit of Aquarius, now, like I said, Pluto is a very slow moving planet. So what happens is that when it's at the very end of that generation or that transit of wherever it's at, right? Uh, let's just keep it simple. Um, so for the past 15 years, Pluto has been in Capricorn. Um, so when that happens and it's at the very end of its transit, it will move slowly into the new sign right? Um, and it'll be there for a couple of weeks. And then it goes back again to the previous sign. And then it moves forward again towards. So it's think of it as a universal dance between Pluto and the sign that it was at and where it's going before it can actually settle there. Um, which we're going to be experiencing, obviously, in 2025. That's when it is settled and it's going to be stationed in Aquarius. So for the last 15 years, Pluto has been in Capricorn, driving everything that has to do with global institutions, organizations, and empires to success. Uh, but as it enters Aquarius, it will uh, begin to influence transformation that has more to do with personal growth 
uh, obviously Pluto is a planet of power. So there's definitely going to be power dynamics that happen. Um, it is about, you know, sexuality, revolution and technology because it is in Aquarius. So pushing us to plumb the depths of our subconscious, right? Um, like I said, Pluto is a planet that is very, it's a very, very powerful planet. Whenever we read a birth chart, as an example, that is one of the planets that we want to pinpoint first. Why? Because Pluto is everything to do with transformation. It is everything to do with power dynamics. It is everything to do with, you know, like I said, transformation on a grander scale, depending on where it's sitting in, in what house and what sign. That's the theme that you're going to be experiencing for the next, you know, for the next 20 years. So again, this is massive. And the reason why I wanted to make an episode about this is because I feel like people don't really understand the massive transformation that we're going through. And it's not something, like I said, I did make a video previously, um, the end of the year, beginning 2024, where we spoke a little bit about this transit. But um, like I said, it is a transit that's going to be happening for 20 years. So obviously we're at the very beginning of it. It's still, it's still doing that dance with Aquarius going back into Capricorn retrograde. And then it went back into Aquarius. But like I said, it will definitely be stationed finally in Aquarius for 2025. Um, so like I said, Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. Uh, it represents psychic and spiritual uh, Pluto is the Roman name of the Greek god of death and the underworld, which is what it represents, uh, thus relating to death and renewal, regeneration and transformation. Pluto also correlates with the discovery of nuclear energy, which is uh, obviously lethal, and nuclear weapons, which are so much more explosive than chemical bombs, as an example. Um, and it is like I said, it is a very, very important transit because we go, like I said, from the structural of that of Capricorn's energy, right? Um, so it had been in Capricorn for the past 15 years. And that's where you seen a lot of, you know, corporations, a lot of like the corporate um, getting really extremely big, extremely powerful people in power, you know, the, the shadow side of Capricorn is power at any expense. Um, so with it moving into Aquarius, which is the humanitarian sign, it is about what is best for the collective, not what is best for me. We're already starting to see a lot, a lot of shit really shake up, right? And I'm sure if you guys are, you know, on social media, if you guys are, you know, into entertainment and all of that, you're already seeing this. Um, and this is something that has been progressively happening, right? Where people, uh, trues, people's true nature, uh, their true character, their integrity is coming to the centerfold. It's like people are being forced to be accountable for things that maybe in the past they got away with, again, power, because Pluto was in Capricorn, it was about, um, like I said, on the shadow side of Capricorn, it is getting power uh, at any expense. And with this transit or with it, with the transit happening, um, we started to see all of these movements happen. We started to see all of these, you know, powerful people uh, being dragged or people putting their shit out there and really basically holding them accountable for, for what's been happening, for what they've been doing behind closed doors, all of this. So there is no surprise that all of this is happening and it will continue uh, because like I said, we're in this transit, right? We're right in the process of massive transformation. So for those of you guys that are watching this video, 20 years from now, a lot's going to change for the collective worldwide. There is, you know, Pluto is the the planet that, you know, ultimately um, astrologers, when we 
think of the history of you know Pluto transits and when it's gone into certain um certain different signs and all of this what it has transpired right what what brings about uh, so as an example of uh, Pl Pluto was in Aries from 1822 to 1852 stimulating the beginning of much uh, psychic and paranormal activity then when Pluto was in Taurus where it was at its detriment from or 1852 to 1883 during which time um finances went through transformations including uh the challenge of the Marx theories uh then we look at Pluto when it was in Gemini from 1883 to 1914 uh stimulating transformations in the field of communication through telephones newspaper photography films all of this right and of course telepathy um then when Pluto was in Cancer from 1914 to 1938, uh, leading to transformation in loyalties and the general pu public from World War to the underworld life of the 20s through the Depression and to a second world war. Uh, it stimulated the subconscious, the psychic, the instincts, emotional tenacity, and protectiveness. Um, then the transit of Pluto when it was in Lille from 1938 to 1957. This was causing a transformation in leadership in sports and the entertainment industry, which is obviously something that Leo rules over. This generation tended to have intense will, confidence, power, pride, and creativity and dramatic ability, right? <laughs> um, so this is around the time frame of what we call the golden era, uh, you know, very famous actors and movie stars, you know, the rise of them. Uh, then we look at Pluto when it was in Virgo at the end of 1956 and from August 1957 to October 1971 and from April to July 1972, uh, stimulating science, technology, employment, transformations and healthcare, such as organ transplants and regenerating healing and you know, this was all of the quest for perfection and purity. Obviously, Virgo rules over health. Uh, so that's where a lot of technology, a lot of momentum was happening. Um, then we look at Pluto when it was in Libra from October 1971 to November 1983. And from May to August of 1984, stimulating transformations in law in diplomacy and marriage music and the arts uh think of like hippie era type uh it was about balancing it was about unifying you know um because libra rules over this then we look at uh, pluto in scorpio uh where it was dignified from november 1983 to november 1995 stimulating occultism transformations in sexuality mysticism of course, a little bit of violence from personal murders to nuclear arms race. Um, the, this was more so think of like the punk rock type era. Um, and this is where a lot of people obviously as a trend, if you think about it and you look back, a lot of wherever Pluto transits is going to take on the energies of that sign. Like I said, Libra, think of it as like the hippie era. Um you know, love and, and, and harmony and equality. Um, and then you look at the, the Pluto transit in Scorpio um, and it was, you know, the rise of like, you know, rock and, and punk and people wearing more black and um, obviously things that Scorpio rules over um, more of the, you know, dark tones of that, what Scorpio represents. Um, this generation was of, you know, very psychic, uh, interested in the occult mysteries, death and rebirth. Sexuality was tempered um, by the AIDS crisis and the fear of death, which is everything that rules, you know, Scorpio, that's Scorpio rules. Then we look at Pluto and Sagittarius from November 1995 through most of 2009, uh, stimulating transformations in religion. Uh, that's where more religion started to, you know, come out. That's where 
spirituality really took a uh, massive momentum. And this is why, because Sagittarius rules over this. Uh, religion, philosophy, uh, higher education and publishing, such as the World Wide Web. This generation was adventurous, free thinking, expansive, and intensely interested in the world affairs and philosophy. So what I'm trying to give you guys is a glimpse of what we can expect, right? Um, with this new transit that we're currently going through of Aquarius. So Aquarius is, like I said, it's the sign, it's a rebel. Um, think of, you know, Capricorn is about rules. It's about discipline. It's about hard work. It's about climbing the ladder where, and basically following laws. And Aquarius, on the other hand, Aquarius is, you know what, these rules haven't been working. Let's just burn everything down and start all over. Why? Because it, it is about looking towards the future. It is about moving forward. It is about what is best for the collective, what is best for humanity. So like I said, the theme that we're starting to see right now play out is like, as an example, celebrities being held accountable. A lot of the, the atrocities that they've been doing behind the scenes is coming to the forefront. Um, one of the things also with, you know, with Capricorn or with Pluto being in Capricorn that it had been for the past 15 years, we have seen this almost surgence of, you know, as an example, entertainers or people extremely powerful or known worldwide becomes so huge, right? So big that for the normal person, it was like they were so out of reach from them. With Aquarius, with Pluto being in Aquarius now, we're going to start to see a decline of that. And we're already seeing it. The, the one that just, you know, when I started seeing all of this on social media, it kind of made me giggle because it's definitely a theme that we can expect to continuously keep progressing as this transit continues on its journey. And it is, as an example, what's happening with JLo, right? Everybody dragging her, everyone is just has something to say about the poor chick. Um, and why? Because again, this is a, a very, like a perfect way of describing it. Whereas Pluto being in, a, in Capricorn, you become you can become so powerful that you kind of lose touch with reality and you're living in your own world, right? And because it had been to the point where people feel like you're unattainable, you actually start to believe that. So what happens is that now with this transit of Pluto being in Aquarius, it's about, can we relate to you? Do we have commonalities? what you're showing me or what you're posting or what you're putting out there, is it beneficial? And if people cannot relate, or if you are so out of touch with the reality of things and what's happening around you or around the world, then you're going to be held accountable for that, which is like the, like I said, the best example is that of what's happening with Jennifer Lopez. Why? Because people started really not being able to connect with her because she's so in her own world that people are like, you know, this is not something that you, you're not doing anything innovative and you're not doing anything that's going to benefit us. Uh, it's just you showing or putting out, basically showing off to us what you're going through, but like, we can't really relate. So people are rejecting it. And that's, like I said, that's a theme that's going to be happening. I can assure you from now all the way to, you know, when this transit ends, um, the people that are going to be in power or the people that are going to become or arise in the fame is going to be people that are actually doing something or teaching something or putting something out there for the collective that is going to make us better people. And those that have not, or those that have abused their power, this is definitely the beginning of their downfall. 
Um, because keep in mind, Pluto does represent power struggles. Wherever it's at, whatever sign it goes into, there's going to be a power struggle happening. Because it is in the sign of Aquarius, the power struggle is going to be, think of it as like the underdog and the top dog. It's going to be a balancing of, you know, more people, meaning humanity, meaning the collective, can connect more with the underdog than with the top one person or the top one percent. So there is going to be companies that are going to be basically their downfall. Uh, there's going to be in politics, there's going to be people that have been abusing their power. That is going to be their downfall. We're already seeing that. Um, it is basically the people becoming aware that we have much more power than we actually think. And only through rebelling sometimes or only through a massive disruption can we be able to wait for the dust to settle to start rebuilding again. Um, so again, these are trends. These are things that are going to be happening for the next coming 20 years. And like I said, there's going to be a massive momentum when it comes to uh, anything that has to do with like uh, how we relate, how we connect with people, people that are so out of touch or people that have been put on this pedestal. What comes to mind is entertainers um, that have been put on a pedestal that people have, you know, will go above and beyond um, basically kind of, you know, worshiping them. That's not going to be a thing anymore. And people are going to awaken because you are tapping into a different type of energy. It is not about, it is about the people becoming empowered because Pluto always brings power. It is about the people becoming empowered or getting their power back and being able to continue on this path or continue on this journey with much more awareness. So again, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening. So what does it mean for you? I would highly encourage you guys to get your birth chart, your natal chart, so that you can be able to see exactly where you have your Pluto, um, where you have your Pluto in your birth chart, wherever it's at, wherever it's sitting, it's going to be squaring right now what's happening with the transit of, you know, Pluto in Aquarius. So there's, you know, squares are always challenging, um, but again, Pluto is about transformation. It is about massive potential, massive power. Wherever your Pluto is at in your birth chart, that's where you're going to have a lot of struggles, but also that's where you regain your power back. So again, P Pluto is very massive, and this is something that is going to be, it's not going to happen overnight. Obviously, it is something that is going to be unfolding as we progress through this transit. But if you really want to know how this is going to personally affect you, then it is important to pinpoint exactly where you have your Pluto placement in your birth chart. So as an example, um, so as an example, let's go through the houses. If you have Pluto in the first house, this, you know, um, stimulates active experiencing courage and being more daring. This is one's personality. You may go through transformations and renewals by self-regeneration. Because it is the first house, the first house always rules over you. So if you have Pluto in your first house, then there is a transformation that's happening. There is a physical, like a physical, actual change that's happening within you. Uh, for some, it could be that you decide to have surgery. For others of you, it could be that you decide to uh, change your habits and your routine in regards to how you present yourself to the world. For those of you guys that have Pluto in the second house, this intensifies your finances and personal values and possessions, which is what the second house rules. Um, one's financial situation may be uh, explosive at times, and one's resources may be uh, destroyed and renewed as well. So Think of as an example, in order for you to be able to experience the massive power with Pluto being in your second house, because it is the house of money, there's going to be a major transformation that happens that takes you to a whole nother level when it comes to your finances. But it may come at the cost of 
understanding or being aware, okay, this is not working out no more. So it's usually challenges that we have to go through, uh, obstacles, or maybe you find a better way of making money that really sets you off and puts you on the path of massive power and potential when it comes to your finances. Now, Pluto in the third house, it intensifies the learning mind, stimulating um, interest in psychic phenomena, mental telepathy, and underworld communications, basically everything that has to do, uh, think of it as like if it were to be in the eighth house, right? Everything to do with the esoteric. Um, but third house also rules over uh, siblings, over neighbors. So there could be a massive transformation that happens. Um, again, keeping in mind always that Pluto is uh, the representation of death and rebirth. So having this in third house, uh, not to fear monger, but sometimes it can represent us going through a massive transformation of a sibling or someone passing um, or someone being born as well within the family. Um, because again, it is death and it is transformation, but it can also, uh, third house is communication. So it can be finding your niche or finding your way of communicating on a much deeper level that you're so able and capable of communicating with masses on a grander scale. Um, you know, as an example, if you are on social media or stuff like that, and you have this in your third house, then it is a perfect time to really sharpen the way you express and how you communicate, because you can actually leverage that and gain power from that by connecting. Um, because obviously it's going to bring to you more opportunities, it's going to bring to you more, you know, opportunities to make money. It's going to bring to you more opportunities to connect with the masses, uh, viral type of thing, you know, uh, Pluto in the fourth house brings transformations to the home life to loyalties, to roots and intuitive feelings. What does this mean? If you have Pluto in the fourth house, then there is a massive transformation that's going to be happening in your home life. This could be with your family, with your kids. This could be with you yourself. Um, this could be purchasing a new home. This could be getting your first new home. This could be changing residency. This could be, you know, deciding that I've been, as an example here in California all my life, Maybe I pick up and just move to Nebraska as an example, that type of theme. Uh, if it's in your fifth house, this is transformation when it comes to happiness with children, with creativity, risk-taking, maybe um, very explosive and dramatic instincts, very intense. And obviously your love life will intensify uh, because fifth house does roll over that. So uh, if you do have you know, Pluto in your fifth house. So it's going to be Pluto and Aquarius is going to be uh, squaring this, this aspect. So there may be some challenges here in regards to your happiness. So what do I mean by this? It could be that you feel at some point that you're kind of being pushed towards two different directions. What is your true happiness? You know, what's your bliss? And maybe feeling that you have to sacrifice that at the cost of loved ones or people around you or certain themes like that. Um, but again, because it is the fifth house, it is to do with dating. Uh, so around this time frame, you can actually, a person can come into your life uh, that is actually destined to be in your life. Pluto does represent destined connections. So um, it could be a person that just out of the blue walks into your life and completely transforms your life because it is the fifth house. However, it does sometimes brings attention, especially those of you with Pluto in the fifth in the first house. Um, I forgot to mention, it does bring people that could be a little bit obsessive over you or people that become obsessed with you or with your energy, um, stalker vibes type of thing, especially in the fifth house. So, uh, so if we have Pluto in the sixth house, this is to do with your resources through work, employment, and self-improvement intense uh, crises may lead to self-examination through health problems or regenerative and spiritual healings. So because obviously Virgo rules this house, the sixth house is to do with routines. It's to do with your work life. It's to do with your health. So this transit, there may be certain things that come up as an example, health issues or even health crisis where you feel uh, like your life is completely transforming because you have to, it's almost like you're being forced because that's how it feels, to be honest. Like you're being forced or pushed 
to change certain things about your habit, about your routine, about how you eat, anything like that, that is going to bring about regenerative energy. You will heal. You will become much more powerful after this transit. However, you do have to uh, address it now so it doesn't progress or get worse. Do you know what I'm saying? There is transformation there in the work life with it being in your sixth house. Some of you guys may be changing jobs. Some of you may be changing careers. Some of you may feel that you are kind of over what you've been doing for the past 10 years, 20 years, whatever. And you decide to up and change your routine completely. So it could be as drastic as like moving, like I said, uh, across the country or something. Um, while for others, it could be that you get employment, um, you know, or an opportunity for employment that it's something that you've never done before, but you're very excited about. And again, um, it is all to do with transformation. It is always transformation for the betterment of you. But with Pluto's heavy energy, it's kind of like we're being forced to. <laughs> we don't have an option. Um, so Pluto in the seventh house, those of you guys that have seventh house, you may be dealing with letting go or ending of relationships that do not serve you. Why? Because for the next coming 15, 20 years, the person that's right for you is coming in. Pluto always brings in, especially in the seventh house, uh, it leads to intense and possibly explosive relationships involving psychic elements. So this is like karmic this is soulmate type of connections. These are relationships that can be deep and transformative experience. This is, you know, especially if it's in your seventh house, it could be that you go from being single to being married in the next couple, the next coming years. Um, for some of you guys, you may have recently gotten engaged and it's a massive transformation. You go from being single to being married. For some of you guys that are married and, you know, have been having difficulties through this transit, you're going to be forced to see the reality of things and see, hey, can, if it, is it best in my interest to continue moving forward? Or Pluto is going to give you that push that you need to realize this is not going anywhere and I need to find my inner peace. So there is the making of relationships and also the breaking of relationships. Um, when Pluto is in the seventh house, like I said, if you're married, it not to fear monger again, but it can represent that there is an ending cycle here. Uh, those of you that are single may go through a massive transformation of, like I said, meeting the person that you're meant to be with um, and getting married or changing, you know, your status completely to, to, to making it something much more uh, durable, much more stable and much more committed. Um, Pluto in the eighth house, it is dignified here, giving intense spiritual and psychic energies for transformation and rebirth. One tends to relate to spiritual forces or you're being pushed um, to be interested in, you know, spirituality and connecting. And for some, it could be like being drawn to the occult or mysteries. Pluto being in the eighth house, especially for those of you guys that are writers, um, if you've been having difficulty in these in this aspect, this is a perfect transit to actually dive deep into whatever mysteries or whatever it is that you're writing that it has more like dark themes like sexuality, um, the esoteric, um, mystery, you know, all of that. And now is the time to really dive deep into that. Why? Because it could bring massive power to you. It could bring massive potential, massive money. <laughs> eighth house is, is that, you know, and it also, uh, rules over, um, shared resources. So again, for some of you guys with this, uh, with this placement in your eighth house, it could be changing your status. Like I said, going from being single to being married, shared resources. It, for some of you guys, um, it can also, you know, like I said, not necessarily not trying to scare, but, um, it could have to do dealing with inheritances that happen around this time. Um, you know, people passing or people in our family, our loved ones passing, our partner, um, things like that, you know, things that the eighth house rules over. For those of you guys with Pluto in the ninth house, it is about expanding your awareness through higher knowledge, philosophy, travel, and world issues. One tends to be adventurous and inspirational. 
around this time. Um, so again, in the ninth house, obviously ninth house is to do with higher learning. So for some of you guys, you're going through a massive transformation in regards to what you've believed up until now, uh, what's been your truth, what you've relied on spirituality, your religion, whatever. Um, there is a massive transformation that's happening there. Uh, there is definite spiritual awakening that's happening. And for a lot of you, uh, you may be looking into exploring, into traveling. Uh, this is probably the most travel that you're going to experience your whole life with this transit um, because it does, you know, rule over travel and all of that and gaining basically knowledge and wisdom by connecting with people that are outside of who we are, meaning uh, different cultures, different foods, different environments, that type of energy. Uh, with Pluto in the 10th house, it is definite transformation in one's career and reputation. One may work with collective energies for practical goals. Uh, 10th house is all to do with career. So there is a massive transformation that's happening there. There is changing careers for some of you. For others of you, uh, accidentally bumping into a career that you never thought that actually brings to you massive success. Uh, there is, like I said, wherever Pluto goes into wherever you know placement it's at it's going to bring to you power that is the ultimate goal um it is power it is authority it is basically you being empowered and it is you getting your power back uh as like i said depending on your natal chart where you have it that's where the challenges were when you were born um but overcoming this and being able to basically use what you've experienced in life as a weapon of empowerment for your soul's purpose is what's happening here. Um, so again, 10th house is bringing to you massive, massive, uh, power, uh, massive, you know, for some even notoriety. Um, yeah, definitely. Because when I look at a client's natal chart, if they have a Pluto in their 10th house, first house, uh, even fifth house, sixth house, um, these are, you know, massive transformations. This is like people that really were born to have some type of power, um, or to reach some type of massive success. Uh, so definitely in the 10th house, um, like I said, it's going to be squaring this aspect. So, uh, there may be challenges there, but the ultimate goal is to empower you, to make you, um, or to set you on the course that you are destined to be in. So having Pluto in the 11th house, this is about intense group energies and friendships, transcend, uh, transcendental uh, wishes and hopes, right? Because this is what the 11th house rules. So it is about intense desire to improve yourself, your wishes, your aspirations. Again, massive power in this 11th house. The 11th house is known as the wish, the wish house, you know, our, our wishes, our hopes, our desires. So massive potential here to make things happen for you. Um, again, it's going to be squaring. So there could be some challenges regarding uh, being able to follow your passions, to be able to manifest your hopes, de desires, and dreams. But through this whole transit, you will ultimately be able to succeed in that. Um, with Pluto in the 12th house, uh, it intensifies the subconscious and the mystical tendencies. One may be self-destructive uh, in the past because of the uh, square that is going to be happening. But however, from this, there is a, re a rebirth and you are being born into higher awareness. One may be intensely involved in social rehabilitation or society or anything that has to do with the underworld, right? Uh, for some of you guys tapping into your natural gifts, into the gifts that you were born with that maybe up until now you didn't even know you had. Um, this is about uh, really becoming spiritually empowered um, with, the, with this placement in the 12th house. And also it is about cutting certain things that no longer serve us so that we can be able to fulfill our destiny here, the reason why we came here. So very, very powerful transformations that are happening. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this short video. I try to
put as much information as possible to give you guys almost an overall you know, glimpse of what you can expect for the next coming 20 years. Like, share, comment. Let me know if you guys are already experiencing the changes. I can personally tell you, I am definitely experiencing the changes. A lot of my planets are like really activated right now. <laughs> so it's like one thing after another, but we are, you know, we are on our path and we are continuing and pushing through and moving forward. And that's what we're meant here to do. All right, my lovely. So I want to wish you guys the very best and I will see you guys soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do, let me know, comment below and also let me know how, how it's been affecting you guys. Are you guys already feeling it or not yet? <laughs> I wish you guys the best and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye.